So, good morning. Uh, so this is different. <laughs> I'm fairly used to being up here in front of you, but in another capacity. As some of you know, I have just begun my ministerial training through Unity Urban Minister Ministerial uh, Institute in Detroit. The last 10 weeks have flown by, and Tuesday evening was the final due date for the assignments for this term. I was up to my eyes in a paper about the evolution of Jesus and his influence on first century Judaism and the nature of God when an email showed up in my box from Duke. The subject line was, hello there. <laughs> Certainly not an intimidating phrase. As I read on and saw the invitation to speak this morning, I was surprised. I quickly called Warren, who just completed his licensing to the same school in May, and told him the news. Silence. <laughs> More silence. And then, well, how do you feel? And bet between deep breaths, I realized that I felt fine. We finished our conversation without an answer being in place. When I went back to Duke's email and finished reading it, he had written at the bottom, you should make a decision on this within one minute of reading this. Now, technically, the clock was still ticking since I hadn't read the entire email, <laughs> and he was right, and here I am. <laughs> but here's the funny part. <laughs> so, in the next exchange, I told him that I was excited, flattered, and nervous, probably normal responses. Now. Have you ever been the victim of autocorrect? <laughs> so the message above was altered by my device and actually announced a very special miracle. Instead of probably, it read pregnant. <laughs> now that would have been a Sunday morning lesson topic right there, I think. I think so. So today, I want to talk to you about peace. We all seek peace, no doubt about it. Especially this time of year with so much holiday activity added to an already busy schedule, perhaps better words than seek peace are crave peace. The two quotes on the cover of the bulletin express why it can be so elusive. Einstein tells us that we cannot force peace. The other posits that peace doesn't mean to be in a time of no trouble or effort. Instead, the author suggests that in the midst of things, holiday shopping, Christmas parties, family visits, and so on, true peace is found when in your heart you are calm and still. Now, for those of you who are perfectly successful in this realm, congratulations. As for me, I'm kind of a work in progress on this. I fully admit that I am much better at it than I used to be, but I have a lot more to do. And confession, my weakness is people. <laughs> yep, you heard me. My weakness is people. Now, when I wake up in the morning to my favorite ringtone on my alarm clock, and then I stretch and I grab my coffee and I sit with my nook and read the Daily Word and other inspirational sites to which I subscribe, I feel so serene. My cat jumps in my lap and cuddles for a while, and I pray. My prayers always begin with gratitude, and then I continue with denials and affirmations, and then I sit and wait for some word or phrase to roll across my mind on which I can focus. From my time in prayer, I move into a deeper meditation of varying length. Then I go out and work out, have breakfast, and I feel like a grade A rock star, super Christ-minded spiritual hero. Nothing can stop me, and then people. Non-turn signal using, texting, inattentive, unaware, unawake, never in a hurry, people. Self-centered, selfish, disrespectful of my needs, people. Rude, grumpy, needy people, people. There are days when I don't make it to the first stoplight before all of my superpowers are dumped into a cesspool of angry thoughts. Okay, and sometimes words, too. Uh, to anyone in the sanctuary, that I have ever offended on Ward Parkway, 
I apologize. You get the idea. So, as I mentioned, I am still learning and growing. Slowly but surely, my heart overrules my mind. If a situation arises that makes me feel uncomfortable, as I mentioned, I have an increasingly strong awareness that I can make a different choice than the reaction to which I am prone. I can choose a reaction that furthers my day toward pleasure or one that encourages pain. In all of this, I am the main character. I am the arbiter of my life experiences, and that does not change. Charles Fillmore, one of the co-founders of Unity in his article, Can Christ Prevent War, tells us, we contain the peace of Christ within at all times. We become distracted by outer things and stop hearing the idea that my peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, I give unto you. Instead, we search for our personal gains and victories, such as the world gives, and this squelches the spirit of peace within you. Fillmore tells us, as do so many other authors and scholars, that the key to unlocking this vault of peace within is prayer. And I believe that we, yes, even we Unity Truth students, misunderstand prayer. The scripture on the front of your bulletin speaks of bringing all things before God or the divine. In doing this, our prayers create an immediate and powerful connection to the Christ within. This connection is the gift of peace beyond what the world gives. Prayer is the surrender of the individual nature to the presence of the divine within. This connection fills us with a sense of stillness and calm in any circumstance. It gives us life, hope, strength, and peace. But, believe it or not, this is not the only type of peace I wanted to talk about today. A couple of years ago, <clears throat> I read a fascinating book released by the Arbinger Institute called The Anatomy of Peace. In this text, a group of strangers are brought together by a similar need, healing and relationships. The leaders of the sessions, Yusuf and Avi, describe in vivid yet simple language the message I want to present. The initial conversation is on this peace within. Without it, we are unable to experience peace with others or see the possibility of peace for our world. In the early part of their presentation, they mentioned the work of Martin Buber, who stated that we can be in the world in one of two ways, seeing people as people or seeing them as objects. If we choose to see others as people, we are more likely to recognize our similarities with them and the possibility of peace is present. No war inside you, no war with them. However, if we see the others as objects, that is, the ones that took my job, stole my spouse, got my child pregnant, shot my son, blew up my country, we are at war in our minds with them before any word has been said. War inside you, war with them. When we are at war, we are dwelling on hardships and experiences that not only rob us of our future, they also bind the current incident to our past, fueling our warring fires. We will justify our feelings and increase our own suffering in the process. When we see others, however, as people, we no longer need justification for our feelings, and a way to peace is opened. We can leave the worst behind and see more of the good in others. Now we'll talk just a bit more about war in a minute. This book has so many fine points that I recommend you read it. I have a very dog-eared copy that you can borrow. But I'm gonna leap to the end of the text and offer you a possible path, path toward peace in our communities and the world. Sound too good to be true? Well, give it a listen. But first, here is the participation moment you've all been waiting for. Yes! So, hold your hands in front of you if you are willing and able. And put your thumbs and index fingers together. And what do you see? A triangle, I hope. That's what I see. I see a bunch of triangles out there, so this is awesome. So, 
In the final section of this book, Yusuf and Avi teach this group of no longer strangers about something called the peacemaking pyramid. The first two places I will discuss are located in your version of the pyramid, at the tips of your index fingers and on your thumbs. First, the thumbs. This is the foundation of the pyramid, and it represents your personal peace as a way of being. At the tip of the triangle, we have correction. You can relax your triangles for the moment. <laughs> Now, how often, when we are challenged by a person or circumstance, do we leap right to the notion, if you would just see it, do it, or think it my way, we'd be fine? Obviously, this is war. Look again at the distance between these two parts of the triangle. That is quite a sizable battlefield. Now, our goal, my goal, as we grow to understand this pyramid concept, is to remain in the bottom tiers close to the thumbs. We must realize that being in a space of correction solves nothing. From this space, each party has decided that they are right and works to force the other. As Einstein reminds us, we cannot force peace. Peace is available, but first, your heart must be at peace. Now from here, there are four other categories of action between the two extreme points. Using these actions in combination with a heart at peace will bring peace to the situation. Another rule of thumb, pardon the phrase, the solution to the lack of peace will always be found in the tier beneath the one where I am stuck. Now, in the layer just beneath the top, and that is from your fingernail to the first knuckle if you're looking, we have teaching and communication. Essentially, this is what I'm doing with you right now. If I'm failing at teaching, I can trust that correction will be a failure as well. Through effective teaching, we open a line of communication. Importantly, and although for the sake of time, this is going to be a one-sided conversation today, I must be teachable as well and willing to listen, which takes us to the next tier. On your hand, this would be from the first knuckle to the second knuckle. By listening, I hear and open a channel for understanding of your concerns and am free to share mine with you. It serves no purpose to try and teach if I'm not listening and learning right along with you, if I'm not seeing you as a person. I must be willing to learn about you. I must also be willing to learn that I might have been mistaken in my initial approach or thinking. This level of the pyramid invites our individual humility and keeps us a person in the other's eyes. How effective is leadership when it is not willing to learn about the people it attempts to lead? If we are poor learners, our teaching will be ineffective. Here's another tip. Failure at one point in the pyramid squelches the success of the pyramid. So, if teaching and learning are not working, where do we go? On your hands, we're looking at the place between the second knuckle and the hand joint. On the pyramid, we have reached the tier involving building a personal relationship. How much do you know about the other person? How much have you let the other person know about you? How vulnerable are you willing to be in order to be at peace? If I am at war with someone in my mind, how can I possibly let them into my life, let alone my heart? To achieve success on this level, I must be able to see our similarities and be willing to explore our differences through these other layers. And if not, internal war awaits. The next layer, from the hand joint to the crook of the thumb, expands the idea of relationship building to our community. This tier involves forming a relationship with those who have influence in the situation. In the text, Yusuf describes this step as taking off your shoes with them. That is, expose yourself to their way of life and their perceived limitations. Then hold yourself to the same standard you hold them. Learn about their influences, 
explore and seek to understand them, then ponder the conflicts you see through different eyes, perhaps through their eyes. And this brings us to the final tier upon which I've expanded earlier, the heart at peace. Now this all sounds fine and dandy, right? But how do we apply it to actual violence and war in our world? We see it every day. Technology has made it impossible to avoid exposure to the daily horrors within and outside our community. How do we justify choices when we feel we must defend ourselves? How does this peace pyramid apply? Yusuf and Avi offered this solution. If correction seems the only solution, it is our personal responsibility to fortify all of the other levels. We must communicate more deeply and speak courageously with compassion. We must listen with a heart of understanding and be willing to hear the other person's feelings. We must put forth the effort to build a relationship that creates a safe environment for the type of listening and communication needed. We must reach into the community and find ways to bridge the gaps between us. And finally, we must establish and maintain our own heart of peace. Now in closing, I would like to offer three lessons as reminders, should you choose to embrace the ideas I've presented today. First, remember that the goal is to have your time and effort spent in the lower tiers, relationships and the heart of peace. Second, remember that the solution to a problem at one level of the pyramid is always below that level. If the relationship building isn't going so well, check your heart. Got peace? Third, and perhaps most important, your effectiveness in all of this depends on the deepest level. Your peaceful heart is reflected into your way of being. So go on that search for your inner rock star, super Christ-minded spiritual hero. And on this, everything is built. Thank you.